TrainerTest.com provides practice exams for the VMware VCP with this and many other embedded videos. Go to TrainerTests.com and try a free demo today. In this video, I'll explain Enhanced vMotion Compatibility, or EVC, in vSphere 6. Now in this lesson, we're going to cover a few topics. We'll talk about how EVC is used to ensure that all of the hosts in a cluster are vMotion compatible. And this is ideal if you have a DRS cluster that's going to be automatically moving virtual machines around using vMotion. It also provides some additional levels of compatibility for CPUs that would not normally be compatible. It also prevents incompatible hosts from being added to a cluster. So if you try to add a new host to an existing cluster and that new host is not vMotion compatible, EVC won't allow you to add it to that cluster. EVC can be configured on clusters that include either AMD or Intel processors. So before we get into EVC, let's quickly talk about what a cluster is. We can cluster our ESXi hosts for a number of purposes. Maybe we want to protect against a host failure using high availability. Maybe we want to automatically load balance across a group of hosts using DRS. Or maybe we want to pool local storage and use it to present a shared data store using vSAN. These are all use cases that we can take advantage of when we create a host cluster. So how about DRS? Let's say that we've created a host cluster and we've enabled fully automated DRS on that cluster. Well, DRS relies upon vMotion. That's how DRS works. So with DRS, vCenter is going to constantly analyze the workloads of your ESXi hosts and use vMotion to move virtual machines from one host to another for load balancing purposes. However, here we see a cluster with hosts that are vMotion incompatible. You can't vMotion a virtual machine from an AMD host to an Intel host. And EVC can't really help with this. If you've created this cluster, this is a cluster that contains incompatible hosts and you cannot enable EVC on this cluster. So EVC can fix some vMotion incompatibilities, but it can't fix everything. So here we see a cluster of ESXi hosts and they're all AMD hosts. This is a cluster that's a good candidate for EVC. When we configure EVC, we'll choose a baseline and all the hosts in that cluster will present the feature set of that baseline. And EVC uses this built-in technology with AMD or Intel processors to create a consistent feature set across ESXi hosts. So how do they do this? Well, in order to accomplish this, newer processor features have to be masked so that they can match up with the older CPUs. So you'll choose a baseline of an older processor, right? The baseline that you choose must be supported by the host with the smallest feature set in that cluster. Now this doesn't slow down your CPUs. It doesn't throttle them back. It doesn't make an AMD generation one processor perform like a generation three or vice versa. What it does is it masks certain features so that all of the processors kind of feel the same to our VMs. So let's take a look at our slide here. We have four ESXi hosts and we've chosen a baseline that matches up with the host with the smallest feature set, AMD generation one. That's our baseline. So the end result of this baseline is that the features that are not supported on generation one are not available. And now my virtual machines get an identical experience on any of these hosts and vMotion compatibility is achieved. 
So that's one of the big benefits of EVC is it can make hosts that are normally not vMotion compatible, vMotion compatible. Now, just a shameless plug here, if you're watching this video to prep for the VCP exam, I highly recommend trainertests.com. And the reason I say it's a shameless plug is because I wrote many of the questions on this topic and I recorded the videos that are embedded in those practice tests. Now, a few final notes on EVC. EVC does have some hardware requirements that need to be met. You must be on ESXi 3.5 or later. I'm sure we're all on that. All CPUs must be from a single vendor. You can't mix and match AMD and Intel. Intel Core 2 processors are supported by EVC beginning with the Marum generation. Uh, AMD has two different sequences of EVC levels, each of which support different generations of processors. There's AMD level one, which supports AMD Opteron generation one through three. And there's AMD level B, which supports Opteron generation three through five. CPUs with the 3D now feature are not supported. Those are a few side notes that you may want to memorize for the VCP exam, or you may just want to go to trainertest.com and check out those practice exams. To learn more about these concepts and to prepare for your VCP exam, go to www.trainertests.com. These practice exams include this and many other embedded videos. And you can try a free demo. There's a 100% money back guarantee and it has over 170 questions. And as you answer those questions at the end of the exam, it'll tie them all to the exam blueprint and show you which areas you need to work on. So there's really no better way to prepare for the VCP six exam than to go to www.trainertests.com and try one of our practice exams.